This video is the first episode of a series on masking in dark tables. We'll go from drawn masks to operations on masks, refining masks, parametric masks, and mixing drawn and parametric masks. I'll try and show you all the shortcuts. And in each video, I'll try and show you some real world examples on how to use them. I'm Nicholas. Let's go. So then masks, a vast subject that we can spend hours on. Uh, well, not today. Let's get started then with a new instance of exposure. And let's bump up the exposure of this photo, a little great tip that's up in the garden. Bump it up far too strong. That doesn't matter. If you see underneath every single module, or most modules anyway, um, you'll find a row here of icons. The first one is a cross, which means that local adjustments are off, which means the module is um, uh, applied to the entire image. The second one is a uniform mask. I click on that, uh, all I get is an opacity slider, which means that I can tone down the effect of the module I've just done, but this is once again on the entire photo set it to zero nothing's happened set it to 100 percent that's by default it's plus 1.24 ev okay so the masks start with this icon here which is the drawn mask when you open that an impressive number of sliders and icons appears and you think oh i know i can't do this okay let's take them one by one and have a look first one the drawn circle here I'll click on that. And what you'll notice that the difference between Darktable and other uh, software like Photoshop or others, the masks in Darktable are actually geometrical shapes. So they are mathematical calculations and not just brush strokes like pixel based. And that makes them much more powerful to use once you've got the logic of them. So the first one is circle. If I scroll with the mouse wheel, I can make it smaller or larger. And uh, I'll just place the circle there. And that means that the uh, exposure here, exposure one, has been applied only to the inside of the circle. The second circle here is the feather, which means that the, apply, the effect is 100% inside the uh, circle. And it gradually goes between 100% down to 0% on the dotted circle and outside the dotted circle there is no effect applied that is the feather which you can change if you go inside your shape hold down shift and we can make the feather a bit smaller then we'll see the effect the transition will be more visible now that mask is a little bit in the way so i want to make it disappear without deleting it which is this icon here with an arrow so there we have the mask it's still there but i can't see it oh there i can see it can't see it can see it there. what you can do also if you want to see what's happening on the picture is click on this mask icon here the display mask which will display the area of the uh, picture which is affected by the module in yellow um with the transparency that was a zoom sorry um transparency going down to zero and a monochrome black and white image behind so that's very useful let's go back to here and have a look at the shape and there's another control we can have is the opacity of the slider of the the opacity of the circle the opacity of the mask which you can see written up here when i'm inside the opacity is 100 percent, and it says control so i'll press down control and scroll and the opacity is going down and you can see the effect is getting lesser and lesser and there there's no effect at all that is an opacity slider, which is uh, you can modify that individually for each mask you make on the uh, image, even if they're all inside the same module. Um, so that's for the circle. So a circle, dead easy. A circle has a center and a radius. So you can move the center and you can change the radius. I mean, what else can I say? Sorry, that was a feather. What else can I say about circles? I mean, that's simple shape. What you can do on an image is have multiple circles, make this one a bit smaller. So I could add another one. So go here, choose a circle, click here, and it adds another circle. And I can adjust that as I want. 
And if you want to add multiple circles, then you can control click on the icon. And then every time I click, there's a new circle which is added. There we are. So I can add some fake light into the photo if you like that kind of thing. And if I go here in the view masks, switch that on, sorry. And then I have five masks which I can individually move around. I can, what's it doing there? This one here, move it around, make it larger. Uh, I've just made another one. That's the computer slowing down. I'm sorry, when I'm recording, sometimes it gets slow. Where is it? There. Okay, well, I'll use that to show you. This mask was not voluntary. I have six shapes used here. And I've got the computer slowing down a lot now. Let's go inside this one and I'll right click and that'll vanish. Right click, right click, it's gone. You think you can get it back with Control Z? Well, it works. There we are, look, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, they come back. So you can undo when you delete a mask. So we've learned how to place circles, Control there opacity, their size, the radius, and the feathering. So that's not bad. What is interesting, I'll just remove these just to show you this is kind of normal behavior, but you might be reassured by this. Let's make a big circle. It's really visible. Just to show you what happens if um, you have a photo that you decide later on. If I go into I don't want effects, um, I want the scene referred. And if I go to perspective correction and I start to move the shear, if I change the perspective of the photo, you'll notice that the mask will also change shape to cover the exact same portion of the image that it was covering. And it's the same with crops, rotations. Uh, anything you like, the um, you only need to draw the mask on what you see. And if another module takes over and changes the geometry of the picture, then um, you don't have to redraw your mask. It will uh, stay constant. So the effect will stay constant anyway. Um, so that is kind of normal behavior, but I thought it was important to say so. Now in the view mask, there is here a safe mode, what they call the restricted mode. If I instead of just a clicking on it to see the shape, if I control click and see the shape here. But if you try and move it, then you can't. So it's kind of protected. Um, I can't change the size if I'm scrolling. What will happen is I'll just zoom in and out of the image, which is the normal key for zooming in an image. So that's not changing the size. I can change the feather. And I can change the opacity. We see the opacity better when it's in yellow. So control and I can change the opacity. So that is made, um, the uh, developers say that is made when you have complex masking going on. You can go into this restricted mode, which will protect your masks. See if I right click on it, it's not going anywhere. There we are. So that can be interesting to know as a safe mode and I will click on that. It gives me a complete yellow mask, which is now applying the, uh, the shape on the entire image. Now let's go on to the second shape here on the list of shapes. So we had the circle and the second one now is an ellipse. If I click on that, instead of getting a circle, I get an ellipse. Now the controls of an ellipse are a little bit different because there isn't just one radius, you can actually have what we'll just say simply a kind of a length and a width. So there are four handles here, which will allow me to make the ellipse longer or wider, narrower. We can change the shape of the ellipse. Now what I'd like to do is kind of have an ellipse that just covers the bird. So I need to rotate this ellipse. So if I go to a handle and press on control, I can shift this handle round make it a bit larger. 
Another shortcut for rotation is you stay pressed on control shift and then mouse wheel. Mouse wheel just round. Now depending on the way you prefer. So here I can make it a little bit larger and feather out a little bit more. So here I am in effect making a vignette because the center is lighter. So if I just hide the mask there for the moment and I can click on this little eye here and this little eye will temporarily switch off the blend mask. So that is the uh, picture without the mask and that is with, that can be useful. And the other one is I can switch off the effect and switch it on. There, so two different things, but both can be useful. The thing is with a vignette is that you'd expect um, me to darken the outside of the um, of the ellipse and not brighten the inside. That is normally what we'd do. And that is what we are going to do uh, because that is the way I make ellipses. And uh, no, vignettes, sorry. I use ellipses usually for vignettes, and not circles, because I find I have more control over them. So I'm darkening down the picture. It's darkening down the center. That's not what I want. The shape is here. OK, so how do you do that? Well, you toggle here, there's a little um, minus sign and I can toggle the polarity of the mask. Toggling the polarity of the mask is a fancy way of saying I'm inverting the mask. You'll see it better if I click on the shape here. That was the ellipse to start with. Now it is inverted. And if I go back in the shape here to get the controls back, usually for a vignette, you want a really, really wide feather because as you can see, the effect is still quite present and the dotted lines have left the picture there completely. That's the matter, erase that. And now I have, I can click on the little arrow and do before and after and there I have a nice vignette. Okay, so that is for the two main shapes. I'll talk about these controls of mask refinement another time and we're going to go straight onto gradients. So I've changed picture here to illustrate the gradient tool and I'm also going to leave the exposure tool to try and use a gradient on the sky, kind of darken down the sky a little bit, let's say for this photo, and use a tone equalizer. So here's the basic tone equalizer. We need to have a quick look at the mask just to get it right. Um, let's see if I wait for the preview to finish recomputing. I can see that it's not computing fast. The mask has gone. Okay, simple tone curve. And let's get the mask exposure down there. There, that have a histogram now, which means I can brighten for the brighter parts or darken the bright the brighter parts these are the lower tones of the image which i can change around what i want to do is make a gradient on the sky so draw on mask move on to gradient and this time a line appears now the um there's an arrow the arrow goes down towards from the from uh, the full opacity to zero opacity zero opacity at the point of the arrow so if i click here Round about here, I have full opacity above and nothing below the arrow. And I have here the zone of transition, which is in between the two dotted lines. And with shift, just like before, same thing with shift, I can place that. I can move the gradient around by grabbing the uh, center handle. And if we want to see what that's doing, let's look at the mask here, which I can adjust a little bit. There we are. So here I'm covering the sky quite nicely. Let's don't want to see that. So I'll click on that arrow again. And what I want to do is darken maybe some of the lighter tones without uh, touching the darker tones too much. Because what I don't like in skies is when you get these very black clouds next to very white ones. For a more subtle approach, I think. I can bring down the whites a bit. There. 
So we have uh, before and after. That's a little bit less bright. Uh, I made a video with this exact same photo, by the way, um, where I show how to make these light rays appear a little better. That was uh, it's a recent video. It's the multiply blend mode I use for that, if you want to check that out. Um, but back to a gradient mask. I have a gradient mask here. And um, let's say it's not the sky I wanted to do, but the ground. So the gradient is actually facing the wrong way. So there's a dark handle here, which I can grab and that will rotate. And if you want to place it, place it precisely, move the mouse away from the gradient so that each movement you make with your hand has less effect on the rotation. It's the best way I found to get it straight. OK, so let's move that there. And now if I click on let's re reveal the mask, I can see what's happening. Let's hide the shape. And now I've actually made modifications on the ground. Actually add contrast maybe a little bit. Anyway, play around with that. That's the gradient. So the gradient tool is a simple one to uh, place because there's not that many options to it. So last but not least in this first look at masks is a curved gradient. And I think um, the dark table is the only um, raw processing application that can actually do this thing. Um, so I've taken a photo of a blackbird and um, a bit, I mean, color balance RGB. Let's move up the vibrance, chroma, let's go a bit wild. Let's go overboard just so we can see what's happening and add some brilliance. There we are. Now what I'd like to do is apply this effect only to the background and not to uh, this part, the blackbird and this tree. And I can actually achieve that mostly with, um, I'll just change the blending mode, sorry. I can achieve this with gradient. So if I place the gradient here and I'll turn it, then you'll see that its effect is a straight line. But if I come to the center handle here and I move the mouse wheel, then I'm actually curving the gradient and curve it as much as I like. Now just mouse wheel it up and up a bit more, just have a look at the general shape. And I think it's not bad there. Grab the handle, move it along. And I should be quite pleased with that. Let's see now. Um, so the mask, as you can see, is covering the curve. And the effect I have is applied on the background. Now, I will give you that it's also applied to the bird here. But well, that will need some more complex um, operations on masks, which means that I would have to cut out the bird from the mask. That is done in the mask manager. That is for another video. So this video is now over. This is the first part. Now, I know it's frustrating when you um, are looking at masks because you see all these options down here and you wonder what they're for. But I'm doing this in several parts, explain everything as simply as I can and in gradual steps to build up all the knowledge you need to make the most complex masks. So that was video one, first look at masks, and I'll see you very soon for the second video.